What is up everyone? Today we have a carburetor from Briggs & Stratton. It is a flathead we are working on. And in the past, I've had people comment on how do you clean a carb without the assistance of an ultrasonic, especially in particular this carb. So we're gonna go over that only in this video. So keep watching, you'll see the process. I'll give you a couple pieces of uh, helpful tips and whatnot to, towards the end to make this a little bit easier for you because it's really not that hard, but if you don't exactly know what's going on, you could potentially have a little bit of a problem getting it started or having it maintain good engine power, you know. Anyway, so first things first, you need to take it off. Uh, you could go ahead and watch the video on this one. You could watch any of the other ones. It's just three, excuse me, two eight millimeters. Probably helps if you see it. Excuse me, two three eighths on either side. Whole thing pops off. Just make sure you don't actually break this little linkage connection because this is plastic. So that's pretty self explanatory. Now, the tools you're going to need is a half inch. So we have a ratchet here. It doesn't have to be deep or anything, just half inch. You don't need a container, but I would highly recommend a container. While we're talking, I'll get this cleaned up. The reason why I would highly recommend that is when we start dumping out the fuel that's in the, cont in the bowl, we're going to want to kind of look at it, see if it gives us any type of additional information, if there's water in there, what type of fuel it has, if it's old. If you just spill it on the floor or on a table or on the ground or whatever, don't get any of that helpful information. So, we have our bowl. It would also help if you kind of clean this up. I tried getting a wire brush. This actually looked a lot worse before. All this is pretty caked on there. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Take your half inch, make sure it's on the loosening, and kind of loosen it. That's not loosening. Loosen it over the bowl or your container. It doesn't have to be white, it could be clear, yellow. It does need to probably be a light color just because it will be easier to see. If it's black, it's going to be a little hard to see. And this isn't required, of course, but it's just going to help you determine a couple things before we continue. So as you can tell, there wasn't a whole lot that came out of there, but that doesn't mean that there's still not more in there. There could be some just kind of chilling on the corner. Gentle taps, that's all you need. I have a feeling I chose the perfect carb for this demonstration. There we go. In some situations, you can save the bowl gasket. This is not one of them. So we can tell there's some sediment in there. Bowl gasket's completely destroyed. We'll have to get a new one of those. And that's it. Float. So this is a problem. See how that's at an angle? That should be relatively level with the carb, and it's not. That tells me that the seat in here is swollen. If you see that, you're going to need to do what we're going to do. If you don't see that, then you can go ahead and skip that process altogether. But just know that is a pitfall. Uh, so if you do see it, you potentially can have it run. The chances of it actually running right, though, is pretty slim. It's probably going to be running very lean. We're going to take the float off. At this point, you're going to want a cleaner location. The pin just comes right out. Didn't quite realize I wasn't out of or in the picture there. But the pin should slide right out. If not, then if it's stuck in there, you have to get creative. Usually a very small punch will be your friend. Just be careful you don't break off this little section right here that could be pretty much um the ending of this carburetor okay now what so we have 
a relatively clean carb. What we are going to want to do is I'm going to blow this out with some compressed air um, and probably just kind of generally clean it. If I want to get this mostly clean, this little section right here is a welch plug. You generally don't even have to do a whole lot with that, but you can take like a pick on this little corner, pry it up, get it clean in there if you feel like it's necessary. But in my experience, that generally is not needed. If you do, however, want to do it, pry it up, flip it upside down, pound it back in, and it should go right in. So I have this little tool that's specially made for seats. It's actually made by Decumsy, but a pick will do. Just be careful you don't scrape the metal. But we're going to take off out this seat that's in here. Uh, you can also get like a wood screw that's um, just a little bit bigger than the hole. I just kind of screw it in there and pull it out. I don't work with wood, so I don't really have a wood screw, but it's not glued in there at all. It's just pressed in, so it's, it shouldn't be that hard, especially if it's cold like it is right now. So we are now good to go. I'm going to work on getting this gasket removed and get all this nice and clean. That can be done. Uh, however way you want just make sure you don't mar the surface up at least not that bad you'll probably mar it a little bit but just don't damage the surface otherwise you won't actually have a good seal but hopefully you never have to see this part but i was trying to clean the bowl because i was going to mention you do the same thing to the bowl but i started to kind of look and this is both like silicone and the gasket so that means I'm assuming that there was a leak and this is their attempt to stop said leak. Don't do that. If you're having a leak, it's probably not this gasket. I mean, it could be the majority of the time. It's probably your needle and or seat. So adding silicone is not going to do anything except make your problem worse because what doesn't come out of the bowl is just going to go into your motor and cause it to just shove gas directly into the oil, thinning it out, and causing damage. So don't do that. These parts are cheap. Just get the right kit. Here's the problem with silicone. It gets everywhere. So I got as much as I could do out without having not like, completely damaged the bowl. But silicone, like I said, gets everywhere. And one of the places it also goes is right there. So I'm going to take some pair of safety glasses and some carb spray. I'm going to shove it down here, aim it towards the bowl, closing our eyes with, well, if you don't have glasses on, which you should, but if you do have glasses on, just make sure it doesn't squirt you in the eye. You should also be wearing gloves if you think it's going to get on your hands. This is not probably on the top 10, 100 healthiest things to do to yourself. So don't do that. Now, since there's more silicone in here, I think, I'm going to spend some time and just get that cleaned out. I will probably be using a significant amount of Q-tips to kind of make sure that everything is good to go because if that is not completely clean inside then one day once some of that silicone lodges or moves and gets lodged in between the needle and the seat you have the exact same problem you did before so it has to be clean inevitably that silicone or dirt or grime or anything else that would be in that bowl is going to be in this this is the most important part this is both the bowl nut and the jet see how wonderful it is so yeah we need to get that cleaned up a couple ways you can use a wire from a wire brush get that nice and clean you can put it in 
um, something warm, like warm water, let it sit, carb cleaner again, like the little buckets that you can buy at the auto store. All those are good options. I'm going to kind of get it cleaned up on the outside and then just work a wire through. There's a hole on either side. It's a little hard to tell because it's pretty much just plugged up, but hopefully you can see that hole right there. Another one on the other side. But most importantly, it's a tiny one on top. Anything obstructs a tiny one up top or both of these on the side, it's, you're not gonna have any fuel delivery. And after some work, we have a cleaned jet. So yeah, we are well on our way to getting this completed. Now we are at that point in time when I have blown through all of the little passageways, including down in here and right there. I wanna make sure those are clean. I'm gonna spend a little time because this is a little gooey, uh, getting that cleaned up, which involves me opening it like this. Potentially, probably the best way is we're gonna to want to remove this plate. However, this is plastic. That could be a little difficult. I'm going to try to take a little carb spray and just kind of shoot it around. So the excess kind of falls either on the paper towel or in the bowl and try to get as cleaned up as possible and then put a little bit of oil on both sides because that way it will kind of keep it clean or at least movable while we are working on it and kind of keep it that way while it's running. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll get working. Here we go. We are at that point of reassembly. Congratulations, you made it this far. Now, what do we need to do? So we need to replace the seat that we took out. That's a given. If you go online, now, if you haven't seen my video on how to locate your model number, it's on this tin right here. It's going to tell you the model, the year, all that. So find your model number, go to Google, type it in, and find the parts diagram and get the parts that you need. I'll let you on a secret, though. Basically, all Briggs and Stratton of this same size and general year range all use the same parts. So. If you just went on Amazon, eBay, typed in Briggs and Stratton seat, you'd probably find this one. So, you know, if you really want to go the route, then go ahead and do that. I would recommend doing that just because if it's the first one you've done, you don't want to get the wrong one. The reason why I'm putting oil on this is this is not meant for a Briggs and Stratton. However, if you do not have this, which I doubt you do, an Allen wrench that is not wider than the hole is a good tool. On the seat itself, there's a side with like a little rib in it and the smooth side. The smooth side is facing up. So if you have your Allen wrench, you just put it in and you press down, make sure it's nice and secure. Make sure it's a clean Allen wrench. And that's it. Boom. Done. Now that's done. We're going to take our float and our needle. We're going to want to inspect our needle. It is a little bit on the dirty end. So I'm going to take a clean-ish towel. Put a little carb cleaner on it. Brake cleaner. And this does not have rubber on it, but if it did, you should not be doing this. If this carb cleaner or brake cleaner or whatever you're using gets on anywhere on a rubber piece, like the bowl gasket, for instance, you throw it away. It's not viable anymore. There's people who say it is. You can shrink it. You can cut it. You can do all kinds of backyard mechanic type of nonsense. Don't do that. So now that we have it pretty clean, we're going to put it on the float. It fits like this. So the piece that actually goes into the carb is pointed and it is on the bottom end. Bottom end is the end that is not flat. 
that goes inside. And we take our pin. Some pins are directional, these are not. Put it in whatever side you want. There we go. Get that cleaned up a little bit. But notice how it's a little flatter. Not a whole, it's not 100% flat, but it's flatter. If yours is like this, then you didn't put your seat down far enough. If you really want to, in fact, let's do it now. We'll even try pushing the seat down to see if it goes down any further, but it shouldn't. I mean, I really pushed on that one, so. Like I said, semi-level. And it's a little more level. That's probably exactly perfect, to be honest. So even I didn't push it all the way down. But this is a good check to make sure that you're doing everything correct. If you didn't do it, then it wouldn't be, and you'd have to start all over. Next, bold gasket goes around. It's easier to put this on the carb than it is the bowl. And we put our bowl on. It has no direction. Just put it on. And we take our clean jet. There is also a little gasket or um, it's escaping me this. That, however, is usually really hard to find online. Uh, if you buy the whole kit, it will come in there, but trying to find that separately, it's not the easiest thing in the world. So if you don't have to ruin it, don't. Because if you're just going to buy the seat and the bowl gasket, it's going to be cheaper, most likely, than the whole kit. Then you just tighten it down. It doesn't have to be super tight, just tight. Now, with it like this, if you were to blow in here, there should be no air. And you shouldn't be blowing like you're getting a DUI either. You should be blowing a normal just breath. If you hear air, it's a problem. If you flip it up like this and you do not hear air, that's also a problem. No air, you should hear air. So I'm going to do that now. Pretty sure I completely just said that the wrong way. You should have air like this. You should not. Oh, excuse me. You should have air like this, man. Looking at the camera, looking at this. Anyway, air, yes. Air, no. Yes, no. This one passed the air test, so we are good to go. I'm going to get it installed. This is an installation video because this carb goes on a few things. So they're all basically the same, however. So I'm going to go ahead and get it installed on this machine and then we'll give it a try. Pitfall that you can't run into is after you're done cleaning the carb, you completely neglect it to even look at the tank. Don't do that. The tank can just fill your carb with water and other crap. Look at the fuel, look at the tank. If it needs to be cleaned, had a battery died. So anyway, if, um, sorry, my battery died. I'm not 100% sure where I left off, but check the fuel before you connect it. If you don't, you're just putting more junk in there. Don't do that. You've spent all this time cleaning it. And you don't want it to have to do it again. Uh, some people are going to be upset about the outside. The outside doesn't affect how it runs, and the inside's clean. So, yeah. I'm going to get this installed, and then we will go over some potential pitfalls at the end. The carb has been replaced. So, while I put the air filter on and the cover, I'm going to go over a couple potential pitfalls. So, if you've made it this far, congratulations. You're going to be a couple steps ahead. So, the first one is going to be the gasket in between the, the air filter cover and the actual carb. That's pretty important. Not so much on a choke like this one, but if yours is a um, version that needs to be primed, that gasket is super important. Never reuse it. You could try to reuse it. It might work, but you're never going to have what 
should be the performance that a new one will give you. I'll just say that. It might work. Maybe you have to push it five times in order to get it to run. I don't know. It just depends on the condition. But either way, always replace it. So in addition to the bowl gasket and um, the seat, you're going to want to, at the very least, get a new gasket. So keep that in mind. Another thing, after you're done cleaning, if it starts leaking, sometimes uh, your needle and seats are just playing well very or playing well with each other. So you might need to kind of work around with it, especially after you put a new seat in. If you notice that the seat isn't or if it's leaking, maybe the seat isn't installed all the way. Maybe it accidentally flipped over a couple problems. Or there's debris where you installed the seat and it's causing there to be a small leak. So keep in mind that those are the two main pitfalls so let's go ahead and give this a pull and see if it lives it is freshly cleaned so it very well might take a couple extra pulls than it normally would and it's like 30 degrees outside <laughs> Try it again. <sighs> so as you saw, it need a little bit of an adjustment period that isn't normal mainly just because this hasn't been ran in a long time this machine like I said hasn't been ran for a couple years so it was kind of suffering from low compression just from sitting there for so long it gets sludgy and disgusting you saw some smoke maybe you did I don't know come up from it just needs to blow all the crap out of it but let's do it one more time And as you can tell, it's running just fine. Follow me on Instagram, small engine 101 Definitely like and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next video. Have a good night.